OK, so I'm partway through making my two-player co-op single-screen elimination platformer where you play as a sentient plant life dispatching enemies with bombs. Well, I found out about a two-player co-op single-screen elimination platformer where you play as sentient plant life and dispatch enemies with bombs. It's called Sabotum Bombers. And as a result, Micaboom is now cancelled, now and forever. Not really, of course. Anyway, I'm going to tell you how you're probably wrong about arcade games. Hi, I'm Jay, and I make games with my... Pens and pixels. So, as a developer, you've got to make choices that really matter for your game. Choices that suit your intent as a designer and complement what you are trying to present to the player, what challenges you deliver to the player and what you want them to do. It is my opinion, as a developer, that you can't really let those choices be dictated by the whims of the masses. If everybody says, hey, this thing is terrible, and you think, no, it would be pretty good for my game, then do what's good for your game. Always. So, time limits. Anybody that watches this channel with a half-functioning memory may remember that I made the game Quickly Quackly as a response to a YouTuber saying that time limits don't belong in platform games. And I do kind of understand that from one point of view. If you want to explore the world and a time limit is what's preventing you from doing that, then what's the point in exploring? But I present to you this alternative point of view. If you want to explore the world, and a time limit is preventing you from doing that, then maybe don't explore the world. Maybe get a move on. Maybe hit that run button like it ain't no thang and just charge through the level as if your pants are on fire. I mean, that sounds fun, right? So it's been a hot moment since I mentioned the goat of all time, Bubble Bobble, but I'm gonna mention Bubble Bobble. If you take too long in a screen, in Bubble Bobble, you will get a message that says, hurry up, or words to that effect. After which, enemies will become enraged and move at double the speed. After a short period of this, you'll get the timekeeper, known as Baron Von Bubble. This scary little SOB will chase you around the screen until you, the player, die, at which point Baron Von Bubba will disappear, or till the final enemy of the screen is defeated, at which point also Baron Von Bubba will disappear. It's a neat mechanic and I thought, yep, I'm gonna steal that almost wholesale. I will make a few tiny changes so it's mine and not completely stolen, but yeah, I'm gonna use that. But this leads me to a point I made earlier in this video, about people being wrong about arcade games. Legend has it that arcade games were designed by greedy arcade manufacturers who just wanted to steal coins, to siphon them directly from the pockets of passing children, to make them broke and get them addicted to drugs or something, I don't know. When time limits in arcade games actually served a few purposes. One of which was to, yes, make the game harder, but there were also more practical reasons for time limits. You ever see an old CRT screen with screen burn? I'll probably flash one up on the screen right now, but it's what happened when the phosphors in the CRT screen were subject to too much light for too long. You'd get this image permanently imprinted on the screen that is now damaged. And if a player had started an arcade game and at any point decided this isn't for me and walked off, if that arcade game didn't end by itself, then it would be hung on the screen where the player decided, yeah, I'm gonna go, bye. And sometimes you would get screen burn from that very moment the player had decided to abandon the game. Unless an arcade operator or somebody decided to come and manually end it, that was it. The screen was on that area and it would be burned into the screen. Ideally, an abandoned arcade game should bring itself to a close eventually. So time ticks down, lives are lost, game over, no continue, back to the attract sequence. But also I'm going to argue this is a more important point, it kept the player moving. One thing I know from watching long plays of my previous game Neko Necro is that when players reach the exit and decide that they need to look for hidden things and turn back, that's not exactly the most exciting thing to watch. Imagine if you're a spectator in an arcade game and the person playing a game has the time to be whipping every wall looking for that elusive tasty meat hidden between the bricks or whatever. That's going to look incredibly boring, you're not going to want to play that game afterwards. So some kind of method, some kind of mechanic to push the player forward was actually a really welcome thing. This is what I'm doing in Microboom. If you take too long on any given screen, you'll get a message that says to hurry up and then the Reaper, the Timekeeper, appears. I don't really have any footage of me drawing this thing because it was simpler than I imagined, despite putting it off for months. Literal months I thought this was going to be a hard thing to draw and didn't want to and then it was over in like half an hour. Anyway, 
The timekeeper was actually really simple for me to implement. It appears, loosely chases the player, disappears if the player dies or if the last enemy on screen is vanquished. Simple. I've even got it working for both players. Now one thing I did find out in the initial stages of implementing this, I put a really tight time limit in there so that the timekeeper would appear really quickly and Myco Boom got very very exciting as I was trying to clear the screens as quickly as possible. It was amazing, it was a great experience, I was full of adrenaline and excitement and all those things I love about playing arcade games. So I thought when I make the time limit for this thing a little bit longer, what about an adaptive difficulty or something that shoot 'em up shmup players call rank that will increase the difficulty of the game? Meaning that the Reaper, the Timekeeper, will take less time to actually appear the better the player is doing. That was also a very quick thing for me to do. And it's in there. And I've based it upon a simple variable I can tweak if it seems too hard or too easy. I don't know whether I'm going to do this in real time, give the player an option to. Probably not. I'll rant about that in a future video. Or just whatever. Whatever. Next up on my glorious list of things I need to do in the moment, the second boss, which I've also been putting off. Watch that take a day and me upload a five minute devlog about how I did it, how I, well, did it, and how I did it. Won't that be exciting, eh? Anyway, it's time to end the video and I have all the boring things to say which feed the algorithm so you kinda gotta do that. Well, you don't gotta. You can ignore them, but that won't help me out, will it? So I gotta say, would you please click the notification bell, click subscribe, like this video and look after yourself. You know, drink water, take your meds, stop picking that, it'll only get worse, be wild, cool and groovy, keep being awesome. Bye bye